Hello guys and welcome to this new video. In this video we are going to talk about builds, more specifically season 5 builds. Um, we're going to go over a few different things. We're going to go over how you start, what boots you're going to go for, the core right now, some situational items, some possible full builds, some guard specific builds and then we'll have a little outro where you guys can, outro where you guys can kind of tell me what you like to see. So uh, let's start here. Um, before I really get into it, I want to talk about that this is going to be a pretty wild guess right now because the meta hasn't settled at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the future, I'll make a, a video specifically talking about start items. I'll make a video specifically talking about boots. I'll make a video specifically talking about the core. I'll make a video specifically talking about the, the situational I items and I'll make a video specifically talking about the, the, the guard specific items uh, you're going to pick up. So those video will come. This is just going to be a where are we right now kind of guess uh, in the meta and what I have experienced uh, with and what I feel like is the best. So for starter items, there's a few different paths you can take. Uh, there's specifically two starter, starter items I feel like that are very potent right now. You have the Guardian's Blessing, um, which provides you with some health, some nice sustain. It's a bit of a worse version of uh, Watchers, although it does give you this roll quest you can finish where you get free extra gold every five seconds, which kind of stacks up to around... I believe it was 900 gold in 20 minutes or something like that. I can't remember the, remember the specific maths. It definitely wasn't better than what you'd get from um, the old Traveler's Boots. If you, you can't really compare, but you get the idea. The other choice you can go for is Mage's Blessing. Mage's Blessing is the more aggressive choice. Um, it, it's definitely where Guidance Blessing is the more defense, defensive, uh, defensive option and the more... What do you call it? The more safe option, Mage Blessings, is, is uh, the aggressive and risky option. Uh, high payoff on it though. You get some bonus ability damage, basically it's the old the old Mage Slider item, I can't remember what it's called. And then it gives you some MP5, which is actually a really big thing, because mana matters a lot early on now. Um, it's hard to maintain mana before you really get your MP5 items online. Uh, the roll quest gives you 10% cooldown reduction, which is actually super strong. All guardians really like cooldown reduction. They do really well with it. I kind of lean towards guardians blessing right now though. Mani uh, Mage's blessing did receive a nerf. It got uh, some of the bonus ability damage got taken off of that. Some of the MP5 got nerfed. Guardians blessings usually should come out online earlier than Mage's blessing as well. And it's just gonna help you push out your auras even faster. There's some guards where where I wouldn't go Guardian's Blessing, where where I would uh, go Mage's Blessing, I think. So a guard like Athena does really well with Mage's Blessing. Um, as an example, Ares could do really well with Mage's Blessing. These kind of aggressive guardians. Uh, Hell in particular, you always want to go Mage's Blessing. That's one of the Emilcy specialities. This item is really awesome for her, pretty amazing. Guardian's Blessing is more towards the traditional tanks such as Ganesha, Kepri, uh, Jeb can also go Mage's Blessing. I kind of lean towards Guardian's Blessing, um, but that's it. So picking your starter items is, is pretty important. Uh, your, your Blessing, I guess, is what it's called now, because it kind of influences the whole game. You can also go Hunter's Blessing if you're playing like Savannah's, you want to experiment. You can play Erlang support with the Hunter's Blessing. It's really fun testing out right now. Um, Assassin's Blessing don't really have a lot of merit to it and I, I'm not sure about Warrior's Blessing yet because it actually is not in the game right now. It was bugged so it will be out soon again hopefully. Um, so that's kind of the Blessing. So so what do, I, what do you get beside a Blessing right? Because a Blessing is 700 gold. So are you going to go for an, a tier 1 item? No, I don't think Boots is very good right now. Boots is uh, 500 gold for 6% movement speed. So you probably don't want to get that. You usually don't back at around a thousand gold anyway right now you kind of want to stay because the buffs are up so often uh, another choice i see a lot of people go for is glowing emerald which is 100 health and 10, 10 hp5 now i think glowing emerald can do very well in a combo with the uh, mage's blessing but what i've uh, what i've come forward to which i think is the best build right now the best way to start is you you just go double chalice you go chalice of healing if you're really uh, if you're not very mana hungry, and very mana hungry, I mean, I think Hell is the only one that gets Chalice of Mana. Um, and then you get a Chalice of the Oracle. And basically Chalice of Healing is effectively 720 health every time you back. So it kind of is way better than having Glowing Emerald once. Obviously, you're going to get your Phoebes before if you have the Glowing Emerald. Um, 
but yeah i don't think that kind of outweighs the, the pros because you have the chalice of the healing every single time they refill the chalice of the oracle it got uh, buffed it's a hundred gold less now i'm all for it it's a lot harder to send you out right now because people are putting wards in all different spaces eventually it's gonna get a bit worse because people are going to learn the best ward places to we are going to learn each other's ward patterns, etc. But right now, I definitely think it's the way to go. Chels of the Oracle, it's so much value on that item. And it also helps you push out, push out your auras a lot faster. The only cons to this build is you're delaying your boots a bit. Um, but long term, you're actually gaining quite a bit. The other cons is that you're, you're sent, you can't really buy a sentry ward, so you'll have to rely on the team. Uh, for that but on on the pros like you just instant or like always warding you have a lot of sustain throughout the whole early mid game even late game chalice of feeling is really good so that's the build i came forward to you can go boots as well if you feel if you feel like that's what fits you i just really think chalices are super op right now and i don't see a reason why you should not build them so when it comes to what boots you want as a guardian there's actually quite a a lot of uh, different options right now you can start with full boots because every boot uh, costs more than 1500 gold right now uh, 1600 for travelers and shoes of the magi and uh, 1550 for shoes of focus and reinforced shoes uh, reinforced grief for for warriors obviously um actually i think i guess you could go ninja tab ice on warriors but i don't really see that having any merit um so about the boots what boots is best right now obviously travelers is the only boots that really got um the biggest change you can say like reinforced and 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 uh shoes of focus just kind of got a, a gold increase a slight nerf whereas shoes of the mad guy stays the same which i kind of like Traveler's shoes are really insane because they give you 25 percent movement speed and i think movement speed is the best stat in smite it allows you to do everything better. It allows you to farm more efficiently with more movement speed. It, it allows you to juke better. It allows you to rotate faster. It, it movement speed is kind of the more movement speed you have, the better you're kind of going to do. Besides the movement speed, it has some pretty dull, um, what do you say, some pretty dull stats. 15 MP5 is actually really nice, but is it better than 250 mana you can just get? from uh, shoes of focus probably not is the answer 20 magical power meh there's like 20 magical power on the uh, on reinforced as well and then and, and just 40 and 45 on the other boots the passive is the old uh, swift wing um just slightly worse you, you gain 20 percent additional movement speed after you leave the fountain obviously and i don't think it is very good i think if you're going for this item you're going you're going to build it because you want the movement speed you want the faster uh, rotation times i'm not quite sure where i stand yet on boots but I, def I definitely think this is one of the stronger boots i think shoes of the mad guy let's talk about that real fast is is the worst boot right now for guardians you can definitely go for it if you want to bully people and uh you really want to get into someone's face and do a lot of damage, but what it lacks compared to other boots is it doesn't have sustain on it. It has no mana, it only has a bit of pen, but do you really want the pen? Do you want to give that up for 250 mana or, or some crowd control reductions on health? Like, it, it, To me, it just seems like the inferior boots for Guardians. You, I can see you could pull it off with like a, let's say you'd go for a Kabrakin uh, or something and you just go shoes at the magic. Um, when it comes to shoes of focus, I think it's very strong right now. I think the same goes for reinforced. They're kind of in the same boat. You want to choose between travelers, shoes of focus, and reinforced. Which one is more game specific? I think reinforced is uh, really good if you think you're going to get focused a lot. Uh, it it, it kind of helps you survive those situations with the CCR, with the passive as well. It has some health on it. It's it's a really nice nice uh, bridge item especially if you're gonna go for a go to the feeps that isn't really very tanky early on anymore shoes of focus super nice if you're a very mana hungry guard you want some cooldown reduction i think shoes of focus ma um, matches up very well with a, a guardian's blessing start whereas reinforced does uh, better with a mage's blessing because they kind of make up for each other's weaknesses with reinforced mage's blessing you're going to have 10 percent cdr but you're also going to have the, the tankiness of a guardian's blessing Whereas with Guardian's Blessings and Shoes of Focus, you're going to still have the 10% CDR. You're still going to have to have that little extra damage. You're still going to have uh, the, the mana sustain, but you're also going to have um, the tankiness from uh, from Guardian's Blessing. So I think those items kind of mismatch like that. Traveler's Shoes is like the Joker. Do I want the movement speed? It has decent mana sustain on it. 
And I think in some scenarios you really want it, like on Hell, let's say you're playing a, a fat Guardian, as I call them, maybe someone like a Capri would do well with them. Um, if you want to rotate out a lot, uh, you could also get them. You, you think this is going to be a crazy rotation game. So I think Reinforce the Shoes and Focus are the best, but Travelers also has a ton of potential and kind of becomes the best as the game progresses because movement speed is just really good. So just to quickly round off here and um, talk about other choices, people are saying oh, maybe you could build Wingblade first item or Relic Decker, and I don't really think that's relevant because do they really give you better stats early on? Do they give you the stats you want for the loss of movement speed? And I think the answer is no. The 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 ten percent movement speed they provide is simply not enough. I think building double blades early on, it could be like Relic Dagger Wing Blade, is pretty weak as well because your team is going to like auras and it's a really expensive build compared to getting an aura and boots. I guess it's kind of around the same gold price, but I would much rather have a boots and a, a Phoebs than I would have double dagger if, if I was a teammate to, to a Guardian. I definitely think double blade has uh, a lot of merit to it late game, but we'll talk about that uh, in a bit. So I think, no, you can't really start any other things than Boots. Um, you could maybe rush a Thief. I don't like it generally because movement speed is just everything early on. It determines how you farm and determines how you how you do everything. So talking about the core right now, what 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 do I want to build um, as a core? I think the, the best way to go every single time is to go for Gauntlet of Thieves. I think Thieves is super strong right now. It's 50 health and 50 magical protection and then a 50, uh, sorry, not a 50, a 20%, uh, 20 flat, okay, say it right, 20 flat um, aura for your team. Once you get the stacks, obviously, 200 health and 15 HP 5. That's a very stat heavy good item. It gives you everything you want early on as a support. Uh, the only downside is you have to stack it. Now... I can see what Hyrus has try has trying been trying to do here. Uh, they want to say if you build Gauntlet of Thieves, you're going to get punished. Hopefully, while you're building up your stacks, I just don't think that has too much merit to it anymore. Especially since you can now stack it off jungle camps as well. Um, if you if you do go for Gauntlet of Thieves, you want to make sure you're getting those stacks online as early as possible. Try and tell your team guys we can't fight right now. Let's just sit back and farm for three or four minutes. So I can get my Gauntlet of Thieves online and then we can fight because I'm going to be super strong. That wants, That's your mentality. Once you get Thieves, you're as strong as you're ever going to be. But when you buy it and you have serious stacks, you're really weak. Uh, let's say if the, uh, the enemy support is going to go for a Sovereignty or a Jade Emperor or a Hard Ward or a Void Stone or whatever he would go for. Uh, so I think Gauntlet of Thieves is always the way to start out unless you're having a really rough game and you don't feel like you're going to get those uh, st uh, stacks very easily. You just go ahead and build a Sovereignty first or a Hard Ward first, um, looking at like what damage am I taking the most. Is the enemy team uh, very heavy on physical damage or is the, uh, the enemy team very heavy on magical uh, damage? And you choose from that. So you go Thieves, and I think after that you probably want to go Sovereignty or Hard Ward. Again, it depends. Do they have a lot of magical or a lot of physical damage? Um, auras are really strong, obviously, because they help out your whole team. Um, and I think they, like, they're like they pretty huge as well, right? It's a 70 unit aura on Sov and Hard Ward. And, and the sustain is actually really nice as well, the HP 5 and the MP 5. They're, they are not self they're not self selfish. Uh, well, they they are supposed to be selfless items, but I feel like soft and hard ward have become selfish items. But they also help your team out more than any other item. Um, so I think you can definitely build it and be tanky and also help out your team in the best way possible. So I think you just go for it. Now there is sometimes where do I want the Jade Emperor's Crown instead? Jade Emperor's Crown is going to be slightly better for your team. Um, but it's going to be a bit worse for yourself tankiness wise. Uh. And the same goes for like hard ward. Um, do I want uh, a pestilence maybe because they have a lot of healing? Do I want a Genji's guard because I really want some MP5? I want some cooldown reduction. Do I want a void stone because we are lagging a bit of damage and I need to do some damage? So you kind of need to think about it the whole time. I say that the core right now is Phoebe's sovereignty hard ward, but you could also say that the core is uh, is Phoebe's physical defense, magical defense, and then you can kind of choose which item you're going to go for. I personally prefer Sovereignty and Hard Ward, but there's definitely merit to going Pestilence or Voidstone or Genji's instead of Hard Ward, going like Jade Emperor's or 
like any other early physical defense instead of stuff. So talking about situ situational items, um, there's a few different you can go for right now. I say uh, Mandle of Discord is a situational item right now. Do you feel like you're getting killed a lot? Do you feel like you can get blown up in uh, CC chain? You want to go Mandle of Discord so you can get that uh, passive proc and survive. Maybe they have a an Ares or something. You're playing Capri. Do you want Magi's Blessing? Maybe they haven't built an anti heal and you're lacking some health. You could go for Stone or Gaia. Uh, I want to talk about Pyfax right now because I think Pyfax is really, really, really strong. If you're playing a Garden, essentially it gives you 70 magical power, 12% life steal, 200 health, 24% uh, life steal, 200 health, and 10% cooldown reduction. Well, well, sure, it doesn't have prod on it, but if you have a lot of protection in your build already, why would you want more? Pyfax is super strong for the whole team. It's it's 30 power to the to the mages and 20 to the physical power to uh, to to the physicals on your team. Plus some extra life steal, which encourages objective play, which encourages grouping up and pushing. And I think if you have a Pyfax and the enemy team doesn't, you really just want to group up and try and take those fights. It's very strong. It's a luxury item. Only build it if you feel like you're tanky enough. But I definitely think we need to keep an eye on this item because this can very well become meta. I want to talk about shoguns is kind of the same right it, it's 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 not the best for tankiness but if you can if you can afford to build it go ahead and build it it helps out your team so much with that extra attack speed um then i want to talk a bit about spectral armor because it seems that the adc build right now is just crit right you go divos ninja tabis executioner crit crit and then you go sc of titan's bane uh, crit would be rage and deathbringer right so they are very crit heavy, and I think Spectral Armor is, is super strong. Critical Strikes only deal 50% bonus damage to you instead of 100. That's that's really busted. It has really good stats on it as well, like some nice mana, really good protection, some CCR as well, which really helps. Um, we need to keep a close eye on this item because I think it has so much potential. Try it out if you're against a crit hunter. Uh, make sure that the hunter doesn't swap out and goes full pin attack speed with the kins. But, but just like try it out spectral against crit chance and you'll see what I mean. It's super strong. If you feel like you're getting burned by the enemy ADC, you definitely want to build it. Uh, the last thing I wanted to touch on uh, was uh, Hide of the Urchin. Now, Hide of the Urchin is a bit different, right? Uh, you gain two magical protection and two physical protection for each guard kill or assist. At 10 stacks, this item evolves, providing 100 health plus 5 per level shield that regenerates over the time, of time when out of combat. So basically, uh, you gain a 200 shield if you're level 20, right? So it's 200 effective health, which means uh, you have a 450 health on item. Let's say you have 10 stacks and 50 of each protection and some mana. It's super strong, although you can poke off the shield. So it's kind of going to work as a Capri aura, but I think it's going to regen even slower. Personally, I've never been a fan of Phoebes because it's a very selfish I item. I don't see if you're look if you're looking for tankiness, why wouldn't you just go Gauntlet of Phoebes? Sure, it has less health on it, but it it it, it actually has more prots on it. Uh, it's better for your team. It gets you tankier faster. It's way easier to gain 50 assists on minions and jungle camps than just to get 10 kills. Now the merit urchin has to it is that the meta seems to be very high paced right now. It seems to be high kill games, so you could actually get those uh, stacks relatively fast. So if you really feel like you could go like urchin and then just go straight into Pyfax or something. So I think you want to build urchin if you feel like A, you're dying, or B, you can build it, and then be so tangy that you can go for a luxury item that's going to help you out even more than two ores with as Pyfax or Shoguns or whatever, whatever it would be. So we, let's talk about some possible full builds right now. You have the double blade build where you, where you obviously you start with boots, you get uh, gone to the Phoebes, you're going to get your sovereignty, you're going to get your heart ward. Then I what I what I what I want to say is you can probably get Mandel of Discord. Then you get Relic Dagger and then you sell your boots for Wing Blade. Then you have these six items. It gives you a ton of health, a ton of good passives for your team as well. Relic Dagger, super good Wing Blade, super good for yourself. You have free auras, you, you're you not really going to die because you have Discord, you have a ton of protection. I think this is the most that heavy build. It's also the most expensive because you need to sell the boots late game and just buy a more and more expensive item. It comes online a bit later than some of the other builds, but I think the date game, this is possibly the best build you can have on support right now, at least if your job is to soak up damage. Let's say you're taking a lot of damage uh, from from hunters. If the enemy team has double hunter, you could even sell the the metal discord for um, for spectral armor. 
Another build you could go for is uh, the Pyfax Mantle build, as I call it. Again, you get your boots, you get Phoebes, you get soft, hard ward, physical, magical defense. And then you can go Mantle of Discord and you're going to be so tanky that you can actually afford to build the Pyfax. And then you obviously have the full aura build, which I call it. It's, it's where you go boots, you go Phoebes, you go hard ward, you go sovereignty. And then you're going to go for... Um, Jade Empress and you couldn't go like Void Storm you, and that's just 5 hours for a team that's going to do a ton of work if you feel like you're too squishy you can f swap out Void Storm or Jade Empress for uh, a Mantle of Discord Jade Empress is still really really strong, Sovereignty is just a bit better for yourself right now so getting it in a build is never bad however I want to mention the later the game goes the better Sovereignty becomes and the worse Jade Empress becomes Basically because Sovereignty does better against high hitting abilities or like basic attacks and Jade does better against low damage abilities and basic attacks. You can have some mage specific builds where you're going to go for the core we talked about with Sof, uh, Phoebe, Sof uh, and Hard Ward or like Phoebe's physical defense, magical defense. Let's say you're against a very heavy magical team you could go for a mantle of discord and then get a void stone or get a pestilence or get a bulwark of hope so you get two magical items uh, defense items the same goes for physical you could possibly get a a, a spectral armor and then um, a mantle of discord on top of, of on top of your core so that was, a, that was a bit about the possible full builds so there's a few guard specific builds i'm gonna go over one of them right now which is uh, the emilzy signature <laughs> whatever you want to call it it's the hell build now uh, I've what I what I do on hell is I go mage's blessing, I go shoes of focus. Uh, mage's blessing works out so well with hell because you get that MP5, you get that cooldown. Shoes of focus, you want the early. Uh, actually, don't go shoes of shoes of focus. Sorry, you go um, Taylor shoes. Taylor shoes are so good on hell. The 25% movement and speed just does wonders on her. You go double chalice. You go war chalice, mana chalice because hell is so mana hungry. It's really gonna help you out. Then you're gonna go feeps into Lotus Crown, into Genji's Guard, and you're gonna be super tanky. You wanna watch out right now, cause you're gonna be pretty mana hungry before you get your Lotus Crown, and you're gonna be really squishy before you get your Phoebe stacks. So it's a really late game build, but if you can get away with Phoebe's Lotus Crown, Genji's Guard, you're really good to go. And then you wanna go, I actually I actually recommend going Py Pyfax on Hell right now, cause what Hell's, Hell lacks is health. And if she can help her team out with Pyfax as well and get that extra damage for herself, it's really strong because her healing scales as well. Then you want to go Rod of Asleep just last. And then you want to sell your Traveler Shoes for Relic Decker. This way you have a ton of health, you have a ton of protection, you have good auras for your team. And uh, I think this is going to be the hell build. If you're feeling too squishy, you can swap out your Pyfax for a Medal of Discord. Or you can get a Spectral Armor, whatever you feel like floats your boat, you know. So that's uh, going to be the guard specific. For now, we'll, we'll talk more about more guard-specific builds. If you want to see guard-specific builds, I have a document that will be linked down below um, that basically goes over the different uh, builds on every, uh, on every guard. We have a video on it as well. We can link below where I explain the document. It's not updated right now. I'm updating it as the season progresses. Um, but there you can go and, and, and click on a guardian or a mage or, or a, a warrior that I think can or has merit as a support and you can check out the builds. So as I out here I kinda asked you I want to ask you guys anything you'd like to see me do. Is there anything I missed out on that you would like me to go in depth with? Obviously this was not uh, the most specific guide because I haven't really played that much myself but this is where I feel like the meta is going to develop towards. Um, but we'll we'll do updated videos eventually. Um, so is there anything you'd like to see, anything you'd like me to do? Um, and then of course, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of new video style, this new guide thing. Uh, if you guys like the video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, press the bell. And as always, until next time guys, peace out.